2021 was a very interesting year for me and without going into too much detail I ended up not being able to post a lot on the channel um, but I did record a lot of videos. So if you're watching this video now it means that I have decided to post these. Anyway this intro is just to give you a little bit of context onto the really old video. So I just filmed my birthday book haul and like the lighting in my hair and my earrings and all that so I decided to go ahead and film a quick Review, this has absolutely zero preparation, but this review is for Daisy Jones and the Six. I read this book in March. I actually read it on audiobook, so I do want to have that as kind of a caveat to everything I'm about to say, is that the audiobook experience could have been better than the physical reading experience, but I don't know because I've only listened to it on audio. It's a fictional look at a kind of where are they now story of a 1970s rock band that never actually existed, but after reading this book you're gonna wish that they existed. I laughed, I cried multiple times, I felt so many real emotions for these fictional characters, and I genuinely had such a good time. I picked up this book because it has the 70s rock aesthetic. It's got the sex, it's got the drugs, it's got the mental anguish and the kind of sort of flower power, girl power vibes, which are all part of things that I love. But I was absolutely surprised by this book. I called it a masterpiece when I was describing it. After I finished it, I gave it five stars. I haven't read a book in a really long time that moved me this way, so I wanted to give a good dedicated review for why I love this book so much and maybe convince you to pick it up and read it too. So like I said, this is kind of written in an interview style format. You can almost picture it in a documentary style, Where Are They Now special, but each character has a very distinct voice, a very distinct character, and felt like a real person to me, even down to the smallest side characters that didn't get much page time at all. We are mainly following Daisy Jones and The Six. The Six is a band that kind of got together out of high school. They had some pretty good traction moving forward. They started out on the East Coast, then moved to the West Coast to kind of get their big break. They released an album, but then on their second album, their manager, producer, suggested that they get a female vocal on the track because up until then it had only been a male vocal and Daisy Jones just so happened to be in the area and just so happened to have the vocals that they were looking for as well as the proper chemistry with the lead singer of The Six. This book really centers the chemistry between the two of those people and the kind of unfortunate tragedy of them meeting after the lead singer of The Six has already been married. He married his high school sweetheart and while they love each other dearly, the lead singer of The Six does have the typical rock and roll problems that a lot of artists had in the 70s of sex and drugs and alcohol and how that does not really make for a family man. The story between the lead singer of The Six and his wife was honestly the most heartbreaking part of the story. The trials that they go through and the determination really that his wife had for um, taking what she wanted, not letting her husband control what she got out of life based off of his choices. She really stuck to her guns and stuck to what she wanted for her life. And I admired her so much for that, even though she's not a real person. I'm going to talk like all these characters were real people, but they are not. Daisy Jones herself is a tragic figure as well. She has all the manic pixie dream girl vibes with the toxic substance abuse disorder. She did not have a good home life growing up. She grew up in the Hollywood area and was basically a professional groupie before she joined the Six. And so her life is not a happy one. I felt like it was also kind of a caricature of what a 1970s pop diva would be, but she takes it to another level that gets at the deeper meaning of what it means to be human and what it means to be a person with struggles and what it means to be a person who feels so much in a world that has so much coming in at you all at once. I also want to give a shout out to two side characters. I don't remember any of these people's names because the names weren't given a lot because the characters were speaking as if they were being interviewed. So they're not calling themselves by their name. It's in everyone's in first person perspective. It's kind of a weird thing to talk about as far as reading it goes, but listening to it was amazing. These two side characters, the keys player and I believe he was the bass player, have an interesting relationship as well that was also heartbreaking and also spoke a lot to just what it means to be human. If you want to read a book that talks about what it means to be human and like the ups and the downs and the heartbreak as well as the joys, <sighs> this is such a good book. This is not really a plot driven story. The overarching plot is really about when Daisy Jones and the Six get together, they write an album and they go on tour. And that's basically it. It kind of goes through like the main highlights of the drama that happened within the band throughout that entire process. 
as well as some of the before stuff. But the introduction sets it up to where you basically know where the story is going to go by the end of the book. It's really about the journey as you go along and falling in love with the characters and I'm really sad that these people don't exist and their music doesn't exist. Like I've never read a book that made me want to listen to their music so badly. Every time they would talk about a song that they were writing or that they were performing and playing, I could picture it. I could hear it in my head, but in that kind of amorphous way of it doesn't actually exist. Your brain is trying to come up with something that would fit the vibe and the themes. The plot did not go in the way that I thought it would go, kind of when you hear the main story of what's going to be happening with the band and the girls and the groupies. Um, some parts of it did, were predictable, but other parts of it had me shocked, but in a way of that was really realistic, like a realistic take of what life would look like for these types of people. I would say like the main highlights of this book were definitely the characters and the atmosphere. The pacing was also really well done. I <laughs> never wanted to stop listening to the book, honestly. The plot was so-so, but it was not a plot-driven story at all. It was a very character-driven story. Another thing that shined really was the narrative style, the choice that Taylor Jenkins Reid made to do this in an interview format really brought the characters to life. If we had read this from a third person, omniscient narrator, or even from a first person, from Daisy's perspective, or multiple peoples of the band's perspectives, I don't think it would have had as much impact. But actually reading the words of the characters as if they were real, as if they were being interviewed, and it's not just that they're being interviewed, but they're looking back on this time of their life from a future perspective, like decades down the road, they're looking back on this time in their life, and every sentence, every word was full of this nostalgia and regret, but also wistfulness for the past. And <sighs> it was so good. I don't think any of that would have gotten across if it hadn't been for this narrative styling of an interview format. So really, the only place it didn't shine was with the plot. And again, it wasn't necessary because this isn't a plot-based story. And what plot was there was good, it just wasn't fantastic. Like I said, I gave this book five whole stars, which is rare for me. I'm very picky and very stingy. I'm very stingy with my five stars. If you've not read Daisy Jones and the Six, you should pick it up. If you're not a character reader and you don't like historical slash literary fiction, you'd struggle a bit probably with just those elements. But I really think it's still worth you giving it a shot because, again, the messages here and the characters and just what they made me feel, I have been in a place lately where I've been resistant to books or television or movies making me feel things because I've been having so many of my own emotions. I don't want to feel other people's emotions and good gracious this book just broke me down and I had, I had no resistance to all the feels. If you've read this book, please let me know in the comments. Please tell me what your thoughts were. Please tell me who your favorite characters were. Please tell me if you felt like the ending was satisfying. I had a bit of trouble with kind of the epilogue style ending, uh, but that's just me personally. I just really want to converse with people who've read this book before and talk more about what it meant to you because it meant so much to me. That's all I have for this review. If you like the way I talk about the books that I read, make sure you subscribe. I try to post videos every Wednesdays and Saturdays, but I'm not always successful. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.